Hello. Hello, Chao Chi Bin. Hello, friends of Chao Chi Bin. Uh, I'm so sorry that I can't be with you in Shanghai today. It was a trip that I was especially looking forward to, but um, Mother Nature kept me from traveling. Uh, we had a big snowstorm here and all airplanes were stranded. So um, I'm talking to you via video and I hope I can address some of the issues that you might find interesting about uh, the gallery and the profession of a gallerist. I would like to talk about you, Chao Chi Bin, for a second. You were the very first mainland Chinese collector that I met. I met you, I want to say, seven years ago, maybe even longer, uh, at Art Basel Hong Kong, where you bought a work of art from the gallery. I think the first purchase that you made with us was Adela Decimus, but I'm not totally sure. You've been an incredible loyal co collector to the gallery, and you've been a real champion of Western art um, across your region, and I know you're respected in China as a leader when it comes to the collecting and the presentation of art. I'm so excited that you now have your own space to present the work, and again, I'm so sorry I can't be there to celebrate with you. But I promise you I will be in Shanghai soon, and I look forward to seeing what you have created. I've had the great fortune of living, of growing up um, in a place where art was all around me. My father had an art gallery in Cologne, Germany, that he started in 1960, and, uh, and had through most of my, um, my youth, my formative years. So I remember seeing Roy Lichtenstein's painting, Donald Judd's sculpture, Sigma Polka's painting, Georg Basler's painting, uh, right in my living room. Uh, things were, were co would come and go. He was an art dealer, so he would own and then sell. But I remember really looking at these works and how some of these works made a profound, had a profound Im uh, impact on me. I have a wonderful childhood memory. Uh, at one point, my father came back from the United States and he bought uh, a big, big group of Andy Warhol Brillo boxes. It's one of the great works of pop sculpture. And this group that he brought back was probably the largest ever put together. Uh, they were hard to sell, so they were stayed in our house for many years. And what happened is that it was my favorite hiding place. So when we played hide and go seek, I would find my little my way behind the Brillo boxes and nobody could find me there. Now, if you go to the Museum Ludwig, one of the most uh, important museums for uh, especially pop art in Europe, uh, Museum Ludwig is in Cologne, you see the Brillo boxes and maybe you think of me standing behind them as a little boy. Uh, let me start at the beginning. Uh, 25 years ago, pretty much to the month, I opened my gallery here in New York in the Soho section. Soho was then the hub for most galleries here in New York. Uh, it had the famous Castelli Gallery, the famous Sun Oven Gallery. So we were the young guns on Green Street, and we opened in a very, very modest space that was not much bigger than the office that I'm in right now. Um, we had the good fortune of being able to grow our gallery in these last 25 years. First in Soho, by doubling our space, and then um, in Chelsea, where we were able to uh, inhabit a group of buildings on 19th Street. Uh, Chelsea, of course, is now world famous as the uh, highest density of art galleries. Um, I hope that all of you will find the time at some point in the future to visit New York and see the gallery at scene in Chelsea. It is absolutely uni unique in the world and an incredible gift to the city because of course all art galleries are completely free to their audience. And uh, they are, serve a great, great uh, uh, service to the community. They educate, but of course they're also a fantastic place where you can meet people and where you can interact with art. We're just so happy that we were able to expand our business from New York, first to London, and now, this year, to Asia with our new gallery in Hong, in Hong Kong. Uh, I very much hope that all of you will come and visit us in Hong Kong, both at the art fair and at our new gallery uh, on Queen's Road. 
we now work with uh, 55 artists and estates. That's an important distinction right off the get go. Uh, working with living artists uh, is a different skill set than working with estates, where you work with historic material. Uh, you will find, if you visit us at Hong Kong Basel, uh, that you'll see work by artists that are alive and well, such as the great Jeff Koons, who is our features artist at the gallery, at, at the booth, or of course Wolfgang Tillmans, an artist that Chao Chi Bin knows well and has collected, uh, but also works by Joseph Albers. Uh, I'm standing in front of a great painting, uh, Donald Judd, Dan Flavin, artists that are no longer with us and where we represent the estate. Let me tell you some basics about what it means to be an art gallery. The single most important thing you do as an art gallery is to pick talent. You, if you can't pick artists that then uh, enchant and capture an audience, you will not be successful as an art gallerist. Um, we've been very fortunate that we early on started working with artists whose careers have matured over the years. Uh, very early on we started working with the great Lou Toymans, who's now one of the most, most celebrated painters uh, living and working today. If you can't identify um, promising talent, you're going to have a problem. Once you've identified the problem, the, the, not the problem, the talent, uh, you have to work extremely hard to further their career. It is really artist first all the time. That's why I call my gallery artist centric. You really want to understand what is, what is important for an artist to get their work and their message across. Mostly, it's excellent shows in the gallery itself, but it's equally important to place an artist's work in major museums and international institutions. It is also extremely important to publish catalogs and books so the artist's work can be seen by many, not just those that can visit and see the galleries and the museums, but also those that want to learn and read. When I speak about learning and reading, I think I'm getting to one of the key elements uh, that is important when you want to engage with the visual arts. The vi visual arts are not just a product, they're not just a thing. They're also a way of thinking and a way of life. And unless you deeply understand and engage with some of the strategies and the ideas and the thinking behind the works of art that the artists are presenting, you will not get uh, to the place where hopefully you will get uh, as an art lover, as a collector, or as a curator for that matter. Um, I feel very fortunate that uh, I keep finding young artists that excite me endlessly. Uh, the last two artists that have joined the gallery are Jordan Wolfson and Oscar Murillo. Both in their 30s, both endlessly talented. I'm often asked, how do you find a new artist? And the interesting thing is, there is no clear answer, but the one thing I know is when I see something that I really like, I know instantaneously. And if I analyze that feeling, very often it is something that I can't file properly. It is something that looks new to me. I've seen so much art in my life from an early age on, and most art will sort of fit into a certain kind of pocket or a certain kind of drawer. But sometimes you come across something that you just can't place. It just doesn't seem to be part of any particular thinking other than itself. And that is usually when my alarm bells go up and I want to make sure I look very, very carefully. And that certainly happened when I first saw, saw Jordan Wolfson's work and for, first saw uh, Oscar Murillo's work. A lot of people ask me whether I think of myself as a collector. I don't. I think that would be a problem. If I was a collector, I would be competing with my clients. However, it is impossible to do what I do and not end up with a whole bunch of art over the years. In the early days of my gallery, I tried to make it a, um, a little bit of a mission to try to keep one work from each of my exhibitions. That, of course, over time was no longer possible. But if you come to my home, you'll see artworks from all different periods by the artists that I represent. And for me, that is a, an enormous joy that I live and, uh, with the work of those artists that are with the gallery, uh, many of whom are now close personal friends. 
let me talk a little bit about collectors. And again, I want to use Chao Chi Bin as a model. Um, we like collectors that are well informed. We like the collectors that are present. We like collectors that follow artists over a long period of time and collect in depths. There is a strategy that you are doing fine if you buy one work by each of the hot artists that, is, that are being talked about right now. I don't agree with that. I think the strongest collections are built when you identify the most important artists of a generation and try to put together different works from different periods of this, this particular artist. Uh, again, Chao Chi Bin, I love that I see you in Basel, in Hong Kong, in London, even in New York, to follow the artists that you, that you love and that you collect. Uh, if you have the ability to travel, you will also find uh, it easy to get to know the artists that you're interested in and that you collect. And if you can get to know the artist, it is amazing how much you can learn, how impressive that can be, and how, how that will ultimately stimulate and drive your collecting. For that purpose, this year, we brought one of the most famous living artists, if not the most fam fam famous living artist, to Hong Kong, Jeff Kuhn. One of the ideas that collectors that come to the art fair can say hi to Jeff, he'll be there, and he'll introduce his own work. Of course, when you come to the galleries uh, for an opening, you will always see the artist present, and that's another fantastic way to get to know the artist himself or herself. I'm always asked about whether art is a good investment. And I have an interesting answer to give you. It is both good and bad. How can that be possible? i tell you why. It is good if you buy it with passion and at point of purchase you don't think about selling it. I've seen unbelievable value created by passionate collectors that have bought great art over the years without thinking of selling them. When finally the moment comes where they have to sell or their children sell, they find extraordinary value in what they have done. Those that collect strictly for investment are very often prone to, to um, what I would call taste cycles. So they will buy something that's extremely hot and off the moment, but very often at an inflated price, a price that will ultimately not sustain itself. So be careful, if you are collecting to, to try to make money, get yourself an advisor, be smart, or get yourself a friend like Chao Chi Bin, who can point you in the right direction. I also want to say something somewhat self-serving. I think the best art is, in this point in time, really uh, uh, kind of concentrated on just a handful of great galleries. I think it's important to pick those galleries that you want to work with well, because the more art you buy from a gallery, the more you have a relationship with the gallery, the better access you will get to the best works. Because trust me, for the, for the, most, for the best work, the works that are most in demand, the competition is relentless. And it's actually very hard to get exactly what you would like to have, unless we know you well. And of course, uh, having a gallery in the region makes it much easier for us to get to know all of you. And of course, again, I wish I could have been there in person to get to know you. I, I'm often asked <clears throat> by collectors how to sell. It's easy to buy art, but sometimes selling can be difficult. Um, of course, in Asia, what's best known uh, for a, as a selling alternative are the auction houses. Christie's, Sotheby's, and now Phillips are doing a great job uh, promoting Western art and are certainly a great place to sell art. However, one has to be very careful. The auction houses market and focus is ultimately very narrow. While they can sell certain artists very well, they have a very hard time selling the broad market. So my advice is there, if you've bought a work of art, first go back to the place where you sold it. Engage the gallery that you bought it from in a conversation about its value and its marketability uh, for resale. If that's not fruitful, then auction is a good uh, option. But we have uh, done very, very well for our collectors, reselling works for them that they bought uh, over the years. So there's a big difference between uh, the United States, Europe, and uh, mainland China at present. The big difference is 
that in Europe and in, mainland, in, in, uh, in the United States, we have a very, very dense network of major international museums that are usually uh, funded to a large extent by patrons, by collectors that live in the particular city where they support their museum. These museums are fantastic because they give the larger uh, audience a, uh, a barometer, a benchmark of what is important. They create what we call a canon, the canon of Western art, uh, that informs us on where we should take our collecting or where we should take our gallery for that matter. Uh, this type of museum landscape or network does not exist yet in China, uh, at least not one that's funded by public money and is endorsed by, uh, by the government, I would say. Uh, so this has fallen onto the hands of collectors. And it's incredible what has happened in the last f 10, maybe even five years, when it comes to private museums and private spaces to show art, both Asian and, and, and Western. I must commend <coughs> you, Chao Chibin, and your friends like Wang Wei, <coughs> uh, that have done amazing uh, work in, uh, in mainland China to promote art through private museums. So I hope I've addressed a few of the questions that you would have asked me in person. Uh, however, I will be absolutely available to, ask, to answer further questions should you find time to come to Hong Kong, especially next week when we'll be opening our great, great exhibition with Wolfgang Tillmans. Wolfgang Tillmans, a photographer from Germany, is one of the most celebrated artists working today, and I'm especially excited that he has agreed to show during this important time of the fair. And of course, if you come to the fair, you'll see the work uh, of many gallery artists, but of course, featured this time is the great Jeff Koons, and I would be very delighted if I can share some of this work with you, get to know you there, and, uh, and talk to you. And again, Chao Chi Bin, so sorry I couldn't be there, but I know I'll see you in Hong Kong. <laughs>